Now Christmas is coming, so today I'm going to turn a Christmas ornament. And this Christmas ornament is going to be modeled after a birdhouse. I'll show you a picture of that in just a second. So I decided to just go ahead and start turning. What I'm doing now is roughing down a nice hard maple blank, which is going to be the roof of my ornament. So I will make several roof pieces out of this longer piece of hard maple. And you'll see that in just a second. Now I've been working on Christmas ornaments for our local Festival of Trees fundraiser. And I turned this particular little birdhouse ornament. The roof or the top of this ornament has a little bit of wood burning for some shingles. And what I thought I would do is just uh, kind of mass produce a few of these. Some will go on the tree and I might sell one or two. So stay tuned and I'm going to just show you the highlights of this little birdhouse ornament. Cute. Now I'm marking out in equal segments what will eventually be different roof units for my birdhouses. And right now I'm starting to form tenons on each little section. And I can just take the big section or the big blank to my bandsaw and cut those apart and the tenons will already be there. Now this is as close as I can get to mass production. I've got a tenon on this blank right here on the end. I've got a tenon here down in that groove. Here's another one and on the other end that you can't see also I've got another tenon. So I got all the tenons made up. All I got to do is cut those on my bandsaw and I'm ready to go. Now I'm at my drill press and I've got a 3 8 inch drill bit chucked up and I'm going to drill two holes in what will eventually be the base of my birdhouse ornament. This particular hole is going to be the entry for the little birds. Now I'm putting in maybe a quarter inch drill bit and you can see the two lines I've got there and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later but I'm going to drill this. This is going to be for the perch and I'll just uh, carve or turn something that will go in there for that that element of my birdhouse. And I'm using the fence because that really helps line that up and centers the holes. Well, greetings once again. I'm finally back in my shop. I've been at the Yellowstone Wood Turning Symposium in Billings, Montana. And those kind of things really get you kind of invigorated. I really recommend you go to a wood turning symposium sometime or if there's one nearby you. Anyway, back to our ornament birdhouse. In the last clip, I drilled out what's going to become the base. So there's two holes in this. And if you were very observant, you'd see a fine detail here that there's actually two lines and I'm going to make a video on this because I think it's worth uh, giving that tip out. Here are a couple marking gauges that I use. They're both handmade. This one uh, works really well. It's not real pretty, but it's got a pencil in there. This one is one of my favorite tools. Uh, I used to use this a lot in wood working. It's purple heart. It's got a brass inlay here and a set screw so you can adjust that and I'll I'll make a video on this and I use this a lot of times when I'm marking the center of a block of wood or a board or something that I want to drill out so I mark one side mark the other side anyway that's an upcoming video let's get back to the project okay here is the birdhouse ornament that we're going to make in this video and I'm going to highlight the roof of this, which just has a little bit of burning. Very simple, but it kind of adds a little, little detail on that. Now the piece I've got chucked up right here is the roof of my ornament. So let's take a look at how I chuck that up into my lathe. I have my Vicmark chuck here with some long nose jaws. And this tenon right here is going to go up into the roof of my ornament. So I've got that sized correctly and I've got the tenon rather straight. 
although this is dovetail, it will work. So I'm going to put it in there. And I'll line up my marks on my chuck and I'll tighten that down. So this is going to be the roof. This is going to be the base of it, the, the body of it. And it's going to be very simple. I'm not going to do a finial on the bottom of that. So let's turn the roof. Now I'm going to use a larger spindle gouge to form this. This is going to be the very top of the roof. Now I'll be turning a little bit fast so I get my face shield on. And for the next 45 seconds or so, I've got the film speeded up a little bit. This is pretty basic turning with my spindle gouge. I have an idea of the design I want, so I'm going for that. And I think you can make a lot of different variations on this. Uh, just kind of mess around with shape and form and design. So here I'm making a finishing cut and getting some pretty nice shavings on that. And then we'll just move on to the next step. Now what I'm going to do at the very tip of this right here, the very top of my my ornament, I'm going to have a wire hanger of some sort. So what I want to do is just square that off just a little bit. Now while the birdhouse roof is in this position, I've got it clamped in my chuck. This is the best time to do this detailing on here. So I've got a little bit of sanding done to 600 grit and I'm going to make some some grooves with my point tool. Now as I apply some detail to the roof of my ornament you will see that I'm not being real accurate. I'm not measuring these lines. I'm just laying this out by eye and it's going to be just fine. Now I'm going to take a wire and burn some lines in there. If you've got one of these, make sure that you don't twist something around a finger. I can't afford to lose any more fingers, and neither can you. So here we go. Try to keep my hands out of the, the camera here. There's a little smoke. Now the wire I'm using is the wire you use to hang picture frames and that seems to be pretty sturdy and holds up quite well. One more. Now I'm going to take some sandpaper and just lightly go over that. I've got some, some burn marks that I want to remove. Now I'm going to get my uh, wood burning kit out and uh, we'll do some vertical lines on that. Try to get this in the camera here. This is a razor tip outfit that I got from Craft Supplies and I'm not sure if they carry this anymore but um, it's got a little burner on there for pyography and uh, you can get different tips for these. Now I've used the indexing head on my Powermatic to mark out the vertical lines. These don't have to be perfect. So now on to a little bit of wood burning. Now I've got a straight tip on this. It'll make a very nice line. So I'm going to work on the very largest ring here. I'm just going to go over my pencil marks here. Now as I burn these lines, I'm going to have some of the footage in real time just to kind of give you an idea how long this really takes. But after you've seen one or two lines burned like this, you get the idea. And I'm going to speed this up so we can move on to other things. Now when I laid out the horizontal lines, with my point tool and burn those in with a wire, I wasn't real concerned about getting them totally accurate and symmetrical, although I did use the indexing ring on my headstock to begin laying these out. 
Now in the first ornament I showed you, I didn't have anything in this part of my roof. And it just seemed a little bit empty. I didn't want to bring the lines all the way up. So what I'm going to do is just color that a little bit with some red. I'll let that dry and put a little bit of finish on it. I like that. Now I've got a little bit of triple E and some shallow wax on that. There we go, shallow wax. Do a little buffing on that. Now the roof of my ornament is completed. All I need to do is put a little wire hanger in there. Let's go on to the base of the birdhouse. This step is very important. What I need to do is make a female recess right in here for this tenon. That'll fit in there. So what I had to do, I put a spigot on this end. This is the bottom of the base. We'll put this in my long nose jaws with my vertier calipers. I'll get a measurement on this tenon right here. And we'll tighten that down. So now I've got a mark on here for my female recess. I'll move my tool rest and we'll make that. So I'll just take a parting tool and mark that uh, outer edge of that recess. Now this eighth inch parting tool works very well for defining the outer recess here. And I'm going to take a small bowl gouge and just clear out the rest of that inside debris. It's a little easier and I can take out a little bit more wood with that. And back to fine tuning my recess. So I'm right there. I just need to do a little bit more. I got a pretty good snug fit, but it doesn't fit in there all the way. So well, one more little correction here. I've got a bit of a taper on that. Perfect. That is perfect. Now later on, I will reverse this piece and complete the very bottom of it. But right now, it's in a rather secure fixing. So I'm going to do just a little bit of profile on this while I can uh, make some more forceful cuts. Now I've done just a little bit of hollowing in here just to get past this, this one opening so people can actually see in there. So what I need to do is look at my lid and my base, how they relate to one another. This is okay up here. This down here needs to be a lot more narrow. So I'm gonna do as much work as I can with this fixing, and then I'll reverse it and finish the bottom. This particular detail gouge has probably a 35 degree angle on the nose, and this allows me to get in there just a little bit closer to my chuck jaws and do a little bit more profiling on the shape of this. And I'll complete quite a bit of this before I reverse it. I got the very top of this bottom part of my birdhouse sanded and a little bit of shallow wax and triple E on that. Now I'm going to reverse that. Now I originally wanted to do a expansion fixing on this with one of my smaller chucks and I don't have one that really fits so I'm making a jam chuck and I'm, I'm just about there. I can finish off the base.
Now I've got to be very careful because I don't have a lot of thickness right here. That was a little bit of a miscalculation on my part, but this will work. But I've got to be careful I don't split that out. Now to make sure this doesn't come flying off, I'm going to put just a little bit of moisture in there, a little bit of my citrus solvent. People ask once in a while what this stuff is. This is just something I get from Home Depot or Lowe's. Citrus degreaser. It doesn't have water in it. So I use that as a solvent sometimes. All right, I think that'll do it. Running very true. I just need to do a little bit of tool work on the very bottom of this. And I'm, I'm really inclined to get a scraper. We'll see how this works. Actually, I've got my point tool right here. This is a great tool for thread chasing, but it also is very nice for just leveling off all this area right here where the tool marks are. So let's see how that works. Now I will admit that I'm using this point tool partly because it was just sitting there, but it's a very good tool for leveling off a surface like this. With a good sharpen, it's an excellent tool as you see right here. And it leaves a very good surface for later sanding. Not bad. A little shell of wax and triple E, and we're ready to put this together. Let's just see if we can get this off this jam chuck here. There we go. You heard a nice, nice little pop there. So I'm going to put a perch in here. We'll attach the lid. Not bad. That's fun, and I like the little bit of red up here. Let me put this together.